Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today, we're going to start learning how to find the volume of what's called a solid of revolution. In fact, the next four lessons for AB students, your last four lessons, are going to be covering volumes of solid of revolution. So we're going to start off with the easier ones today, and then we'll slowly get just a little bit of a tweak for each one of the next three lessons. So let's first take the area of this uh, bounded region. Y equals x squared, y equals 0, x equals 2. So if you know that one, go ahead and beat me to it while I'm drawing this. So I'm going to plot some points that I know here for this curve, this quadratic, and then I can sketch the, the quadratic parabola. And then I have my y equals 0 and x equals 2. So y equals 0 is just the x-axis, and then x equals 2. So this is my region here that I'm going to be working with. And we are now going to revolve it around the x axis to create a solid. What in the world are we talking about? We're trying to take this two-dimensional shape and bring it off the paper towards us and then circle it all the way down here and then back around. So we're going to go in a circle around this thing. Let me show you what that will look like. I have this cool applet here. So this is just the curve y equals x squared. Just this one little piece of the, of the uh, parabola from 0 to 2. And watch what happens when I revolve it. Woo! Goes in a circle. Let me do that again goes in a circle, and if I turn it over here, you can kind of see what's going on. You have this thing that looks a little bit like a, a cone, or excuse me, not cone, but a, a funnel, where you have a funnel where it's slowly coming down in here, but it would be a complete solid. So here there's a point to it. If we look at this side, this right here would be a solid face. Now if I turn it in here, this little applet that I'm using, it looks like makes it look like it's a hollow, just like a funnel, but it would not be hollow in there. It would be a completely solid uh, Sol <laughs> it's a solid solid. Uh, let me do it one more time so you can see it. So I'm going to turn it just a little bit like this. So we revolve it around in a circle and it comes around like that. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. We're taking the area of something and revolving it in a circle. That's a solid of revolution. The trick is how to graph that on a two-dimensional shape. Now, some of you are going to be artists and you're going to be like, oh, easy, no problem. We're going to mirror this image down here. So whatever area you are revolving, just do the mirror image of it on the other side of your axis of revolution. In this case, the axis of revolution is the x-axis because it says right here, we're revolving it around the x-axis. So that's my revolution line. And, uh, and then sketch it down like that. So do the mirror image. Sketch your upside down parabola that does not look exactly like a mirror image, but close enough. And then, uh, I'm not really good at this, okay, I'm sorry, but you're going to try to create a, like an oval shape. So we're going to revolve this down this direction, kind of like an oval shape, and then on the other side, a little bit of an oval shape. Whoop. Okay, so something like that. So it looks like we've gone in a circle. And so this then would have that shape that we just showed you from before, and you'd have the whole thing would be shaded in because it is a nice, perfect solid. The next part is to think about a uh, cross-section. If I could just take this and cut it anywhere along the shape and talk about a cross-section, which we talked about those in some of our last lessons. If I took the cross-section, what would the cross-section look like? I could slice it here, open the thing up so we could see both this left side and right side's face. What is that? The face of that would be a circle. It's just a, a, it's a nice perfect circle because again, we're revolving it in a circle. So the whole thing, anywhere I cut it would look like a circle. Well, the area of a circle is simple. Pi r squared. We know that. But what is the radius of this particular circle? If I split it open, what is the r? From the middle to the outside of the object, that's the r. So for this, it's just the function, f. It's whatever the outside of that solid is, that is our r. Now we're going to call it a capital R for, these le for this lesson. It'll become very clear why I'm calling it uh, capital R in a couple more lessons, but just not yet. So instead of a little r, we're calling it a capital R stands for radius. And it's particularly, it stands for the radius on the outside of the object. So what is the area of one cross section for this thing? So if I looked at this red line here and I could open it up and look at a cross section, it would be this pi r squared. So it's pi. Here's my r and this is squared. The r again is just the function x squared. So that's what it comes from. So now what's the volume? The volume is every possible cross section. If I could do a million cross sections in here, do, 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 just a, a whole bunch of cross sections all over up and down here, and then take the area of all of them and add them up, that would give me the volume. So that's the same thing as just saying this, except, oh, that's a mistake. Not zero to one, zero to two. If we go from zero to two 
and we take every single cross section, so it's pi r squared, so this is my capital R, this is the squared, then if we take the volume of that, or excuse me, if we integrate that whole thing, that gives us every single cross section in there. That's the nice thing about an integral. It sums them all up. That's what an integral is doing for you. Okay, so that's basically the lesson. I'm going to give you two more examples just to help you out a little bit, uh, but this was it. So let's write out what is the equation for a volume of, of a solid revolution. It is from A to B, we take the integral of pi r squared. Pi r squared is the area of one cross section, so you're just taking the sum of all possible cross sections. That's what happens when you integrate. Um, oh, I should say that. This is the r of x. So where r of x is the distance between the axis of revolution and the outside of the solid. So in today's lesson, this axis of revolution thing for today, we're, that's just either the x-axis or the y-axis. That's the only two things we're doing in today's lesson. So we're, we're keeping it very simple. So let's do another problem here. Uh, to be honest, sometimes the hardest thing is trying to figure out what the picture looks like when you don't have a picture of it. So let's take a quick little sketch of a graph, y equals e to the x. Well, what does that graph look like? That's an exponential curve that does something like this. And then y equals zero is here. Y, oh, that's a mistake. I'll, I'll change that on your notes. That's supposed to be x, sorry. y equals zero, x equals zero. Uh, so that's this line here here and x equals three. So I don't know, somewhere out here. So this in red is the area that I'm trying to revolve. So now I have to do the exact same shape on the other side. So I'm going to go down here like this and I just do the mirror image. So a little bit of a, of a exponential curve, come back, and then I'm going to make the circle like this, kind of little oval shapes on both sides now because I, and then dash, 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 it's going behind it. So now you can see I have, kind of looks like a funnel, but it's uh, not a pointy shape on bottom. It's a little bit more open. But both sides of this, if I could look at the left side, look at the right side, they would both be solid. They're not open. They'd be a flat surface because this whole area is being revolved around it. All right, now let's set up our equation. So we say, our integral, I mean. So we're going to say from A to B. So I'm starting at zero x equals 0, and I'm going to tell this line. What was that one? That was x equals 3. So 0 to 3, pi, and then my radius squared with respect to x. What's my radius squared? It's this outside of the, the solid, which is just the curve, which is e to the x. So I'm going to say e to the x. All right, now let's figure out how to start simplifying and integrating this. I'm gonna, this is a constant, the pi, so it's okay to bring it out front. That's not a problem. Just be careful when you do that. A common mistake is you bring the pi outside and then you forget at the very end to multiply it by pi. So just don't forget that, especially if you were using a calculator on this. All right, e to the x squared, what is that? E to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x, right? Power to a power means you multiply the powers. So this is 2x dx. So how do I integrate this? Oh, this goes back to our unit six. This is requiring chain rule type thing, like a derivative would require chain rule. So for integrals, it requires u substitution right there. So let's go off here to the side. I'm going to quickly do u substitution. u will equal 2x. So du equals 2 dx, which means du over 2 is equal to dx. Okay, let's go back up here now. We've got pi. Now I can change my boundaries. It's not 0 to 3 anymore. I'm going to use u substitution. So my u was equal to 2x. So 0 gets plugged in here, still a 0. My 3 gets plugged in here, and now that's a 6. And then I can change this from e to u. And now my dx was what? My dx is du over, du over 2. All right, so this 2 can just come out here and join the pi. So it's going to be a pi over 2 integrate from, oh, I got to say, the integral of e to the u is e to the u. That's nice. And then I'm integrating it from 0 to 6. So pi over 2, integrate, plug in the 6 first, e to the 6th, minus, plug in a 0, e to the 0. And then that e to the 0 is just a 1. So this whole thing simplifies to pi over 2 times e to the 6 minus 1. And that's the answer. That is the answer in terms of pi. It's the exact answer, no rounded decimal on that exact problem. And a lot of times on the free response, they will actually have you 
use it in terms of pi. So the practice, where have you solved? In today's lesson, you are going to not use a calculator, and not a calculator on the master check either. You're going to actually leave it in terms of pi and do the uh, practice, the integration techniques. All right, last one. Now this time, you'll notice we're doing it with the y-axis. So instead of revolving up and down around the x-axis like we did on the first two examples, we're now going to revolve it left and right uh, around the y-axis. Before we do that, let's set up what the picture looks like. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right here. Four minus two x, so one, two, three, four, down two over one, down two over one. There's my line like this. And I am now doing it around the y-axis, which means I'm going this direction. I'm revolving like that in a circle. So uh, with the y-axis, I want to do the mirror image over here this time. I don't want to do it down here because that would be the x-axis. And then we can uh, do our little circle oval shape going around the back of it. So now we're going to set up our integral. Well, let me get some points here. The bottom of this shape is the, has a y-value that equals 0. The top of this shape has a y-value that equals Four, right? Yeah, because the y-intercept was four. So when I set up my integral, I'm going from zero to four, right? Yeah, this problem is just setting up the integral. We're not actually going to solve it. So let's just set this up correctly. So we have now pi, and then I have to do r squared with respect to y. So now this is a little tricky. What's my r, my uh, radius? It's from the center to the outside. So what I need is this. From the center to the outside, what is the equation of that? It's right here, but it's in terms of x. So I need to rewrite this and write it in terms of y. So let's solve for x. And that'll do this for me. So uh, let's see. Subtract the 4. So y minus 4 equals negative 2x. And then divide everything by negative 2. I'll have a negative 1 half y plus 2 equals x. So now this is that line. Since I'm doing it with respect to y around the y-axis, I'm going to put the 2 first, so 2 minus 1 half y. And there is my integral setup for this with respect to y. So just be careful that you look carefully. Does it say x-axis or does it say y-axis so you know which ones to work with? All right, that's everything for this lesson. And we're going to use the same techniques in our next three lessons, so that'll be nice. We're just going to add on a little bit more and then a little bit more to it. So rock that master check. I'll see you back on our next one.